Thank you for listening to the weekly messages of New Providence Primitive Baptist Church. To subscribe to our podcast, hear other messages, or learn more about us, please visit nppbc.com. Told my wife on the way home this evening from work, and I don't want you to think that I'm not always nervous. Sometimes there are more than, more than others. And I've been nervous since I woke up today knowing that I had to stand the night. Knowing that the Lord had given me something. But I love it. When I come to church and what he gives me is what fits the mood. Is what fits what's going on. It encourages my soul to know. And it may not mean nothing to you, but to know that my God talks to me and tells me what he wants me to do, that means something to me. To know that he hears somebody as small as I am, that knows my heart's desires to do his will, to do what he would bid me to do. And just for, and sometimes it's just hard to explain. Sometimes you doubt yourself. Sometimes you doubt standing up here if you really know what you're supposed to do or not. But then there's other times when there's nights like tonight that you're sitting there and your heart just feels like it's about to beat out of your chest. You feel like you can't wait no longer. You feel like you, you know, and don't get me wrong, I enjoy the singing. and I enjoy everybody's doing what they felt like they needed to do for them. But I couldn't wait to get up here because I knew what the Lord had for us here tonight. And again, I'm going to read one verse of scriptures, what he's kind of put on our heart. And he gave me this probably a couple of weeks ago. And I've not really been able, that's what I was telling my wife, that I've not really been able to just dive in and get it like I normally get. I just had to trust in him and kind of listen to him and what little things he's given me here and there, just kind of piece it all together. So you pray for us tonight. That's very familiar scripture, chapter 8 of the book of Romans. I said we're going to read one verse, so I'll give you just a second to get there. Again, that's Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 28. And it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Lord, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity to gather tonight. Lord, Lord, we thank You, Lord, for what You've done for us. Lord, thank You, Lord, if it means nothing to nobody else. Lord, Lord, thank You, Lord, for what You've done for me this day. Lord, for watching over us, dear Lord. Lord, for being with us, Lord, helping us, Lord, through these things. Lord, I pray, Lord, Lord, that You go before us here tonight, Lord, that You hide us behind the cross, dear Lord. Lord, that Your name will be exalted, that Your name will be lifted up. Lord, that whatever need here is needs to be met tonight, Lord, that You'll meet it, dear Lord. Lord, that You'll just help us be obedient under Your will. Lord, Lord, that we'll do whatever you'd have us to do, Lord, and that the congregation will do the same, Lord. Lord, if they're bidding, if you're bidding them to do something, Lord, just help them, Lord, just to take that step and be courageous, Lord, and do that, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we praise you for all that you do for us, Lord. It's in your name we pray, Lord. Amen. I said, again, I've had this thought for a couple of weeks now, and I just didn't really know how to get to where I needed to get to with it, if that makes sense. But all day today, I was faced with the devil. It seemed like all day today at work. Every time I turn around, he was he was facing me. He was fighting me. And he was coming at me and telling me this and telling me that. But then all day, this scripture kept coming to my mind. I bet I quoted this scripture to myself probably fifty times today, and I've probably misquoted it throughout the years. You know, and it goes and I, and I read it again. It says, "We know that all things work together for the good." See, a lot of times we stop right there. We think that all things work together for the good, but it's not all things that work together for the good. It's but to, to them that love God. See, sometimes we leave that out. It's to them that love God all the things work together for the good. To who that He's called according to His purpose. And again, I begin studying that, and I begin reading and, and asking the Lord where He'd have us to go, how He wanted us to get to where He wanted us with this, and He gave me a man in the Bible that went through. Many many afflictions that went through many things that he was going through and he was trying to just live his life the right way and again this is a very familiar scripture very familiar story Lord that you've probably all heard and read many a times so again you just bear with us you pray for us tonight that Lord that whatever the, the Lord of the will is or the Lord's will is tonight that we'll be part of that we'll do what he'd have us to do and I want to read over here in the book of Genesis on chapter 37 and start at verse 12 
And we know the story. This is about Joseph. This is Joseph. You know, his, his father said he loved him more than any other children that he had. He made him a coat of many colors and put it on him. And it envied his brothers. It made his brothers mad. He went to his father and told him that the evil things that were going on. And it made his brothers mad. It upset him that he was so looked upon, that he was so well favored by his father. And they desired to kill him. You know, sitting right there in verse 12, it said, His brother went and fed their father's flock in Shesham. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shesham, and come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here I am. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it be well with thy brethren, and be well with thy flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent out the, word, the, he sent out the vow of Hebron, and came to Shesham. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What seekest thou? And he said, I, see, I said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where are they feeding the flocks? And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when, he, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said unto him one another, Behold, this, here cometh the dreamer. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil hath, beast has devoured him. We will so see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him of their hands to deliver him from his fa- to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, and they stripped Joseph's coat out of his coat of his many colors and that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of the Ishmaelites came from Gilgad, and their camels bearing spicery and, and bombs and mirth going to carry him down to Egypt. And when Judah said unto his brethren, What profit if we see it slay our brethren and counsel his, er, conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let none of our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then they passed by the Midianites and merchantmen, and they drew up and lifted Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now I'll stop reading there, and I... And I the thought that the Lord kind of gave me with that is, hey, he was doing what his father asked him to do. He was going to check on his brother. He was going to check on the flock. How often times do we do what we're fit? Do we feel like we're doing what the Father has sent us out to do? And that snare that sometimes falls in there is people that don't like what we're doing. There's people that don't like what we're doing or people don't like that we're praising God. And so they often want to throw us off in that pit. They want to put us down there. They want to keep us down there because they don't like what's going on in our life. They don't like that we're trying to be obedient to the Father. That we're trying to do the Father's will. See, so, and that's what they did. They were angry with him. They didn't like what was going on. So they threw him in that pit. See, he, again, he was just out doing what he thought that he needed to do. He was just out listening and obeying his father. How many times if we outgo and obey our father, do people look down at us? Yeah. How many times do we come to church on Wednesday night or on Thursday night or Sunday morning or on Sunday night and people say, why, why are you doing all that? There ain't no point in all that. There ain't no point in coming to church. There ain't no point in serving God anymore. Hey, there ain't no point in you doing what you're doing. They don't like what we're doing. Why? Because sometimes if we're doing it the right way, we're doing it for God and we're lifting Him up, their sin usually will will come out of that. We know what they're living in. We know the things that are going on. We don't have to tell them those things. We don't have to tell them that they're wrong, but the God in us does that for us. So they want to put us off. They want to put us down in a pit. They want to take us from what we're what, for doing what we're supposed to be doing and try to destroy what we're doing here. You think that Satan out, ain't out every single day. Brother Greg mentioned it. Brother Danny mentioned it. Satan's out trying to, to, to kill us. He's trying to deceive God's people. He's trying to shut down that revival that took place. He's trying to shut down the one that's coming up. Because I believe that it's coming up. I believe that there's more coming forward. I don't believe that it's ended. I don't believe that it's stopped. I believe that God's people are finally starting to wake up a little bit and say, Hey, I want some more of that. I want you, Lord, to move in a sense. I want you to move on my people. I want you to awake our nation again. I want you to do that. And if you can sit here tonight and think that Satan ain't going to fight you tooth and nail for that, you you need to get things right because 
Satan is going to do everything he can possibly do to deceive you, to get you away from God. Just like they did here to Joseph. He said he was doing what he was bid to do. If we'll do what we're bid to do, hey, there may be troubles come. There may be pits that we're through into. There may be trials that we have to face. Hey, but you can go on reading a little bit. It wasn't very long until Joseph got into... There in chapter 39, it said... Uh, let me just go over so I don't tell you wrong. It said, And Joseph was brought down into Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard of the Egyptians, bought him in the hands of the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and prosperous man, and he was in the house, his master of the Egyptian. And the master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made... All that he did prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer of his house, and that all he had put him into his hand. See, God already knew. He already knew the persecution that he was going to face. He already knew he was going to be through in a pit. He had already set in motion somebody to get him up out of there. He had already set in motion somebody to take him in. Said when he took him in, God, God's favor was upon this man. God's favor was with him. And he said, hey... Whatever you do, I'm going to bless. It don't matter who you're with. It don't matter what you're doing. I'm going to bless as long as you stay in my will. See, and we have to realize that. We have to acknowledge that. As long as we stay in God's will, as long as we're doing what His business and being doing what He would have us to do, hey, He's going to take care of all that. We may face trials. We may face troubles. Hey, and it wasn't very long here that the wife of this, of this king said, Hey, why don't you come with me? Why don't you be with me for a little while? And he turned her down at multiple times and said, No. That's the wickedness of the devil that you're speaking of. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And again, she didn't like because she wouldn't give in to him. How often times does Satan not like that we won't give in to him? And he tries to throw something up in our That's face and tries to show us hate and take somebody else to hate. They're not doing right. They're not doing right because they didn't do this. They're not doing right because they didn't do this. All along, we know that Joseph did nothing wrong here. You can read it in the Word. He was, he was seeking God's will in everything. Be it just like the old accuser. Because he was doing what God would bid him to do. He said, hey, you're wrong. Just like the world that we live in today. Hey, you're going to church. You're wrong. You're wrong for telling me that abortion's wrong. You're wrong for telling me that same-sex marriage is wrong. You're wrong for telling me these things that are going on in our school system are wrong. You're wrong for that. You don't love nobody. You're just hatred. You're just hatred. You're spilling out everywhere. That's all you stand for. That's the lie of the devil. That's what he wants just to believe. That's what he's got the world convinced of. That we Christian people hate everybody else. And it's just about us. He got every, And you can look, you can turn on the news, you can turn on the TV, you can walk down the street. And he's got people convinced of that, of that very thing. I have never seen a dislike for the church people as I've, I've seen now. Even when I was young, even when I was lost, there was respect for the man of God. There was respect for the church house. You didn't come in the church house and talk this way or do these things. Hey, it's going on all over our country. Hey, it's going on right here in our county. Why, is our, why are those things taking place? Because Satan's got people convinced. Satan's got people bound down and knowing that, hey, they're doing wrong. You might as well not go to that church down there on Six Mile. And you can look through the congregation tonight, and don't get me wrong, I am thankful for everyone that's here. But the shape of the world that we live in today, the state of things that are going on, there should not be an empty seat one in this house tonight. We should have to be like it was in that revival. We should have to be pulling folding chairs out. We should have to be staying on the altar praying with people because they were worried about what's going on out there. See, but they're not worried because they're not living right. You say, well, that's harsh to say. It's harsh for you to say that everybody out there is not living right. What makes you better? Hey, I'm no better than them out there. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I have to I have to confess my faults daily to God every single day. I let him down probably more than anybody in here. Every single day I mess up and I fall short. But I have to repent of that. I have to do my part. And if I'll do my part, God will take care of the rest. God will take care of the naysayers. God will take care of those that are trying to burden us down. God will take care of those that are trying to stop the movement. You can read through all about the Bible. How many times Satan roared up his ugly face and said, Hey, I'm going to shut this down. You could also go back and you can read how many times God provided a way. 
God made a way for that. that. There was an old man named Saul that thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he was out persecuting the Christian people. He thought, hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing what God would have me. He thought he was in the right. Just like I honestly believe that there's a lot of people out there convinced that they are doing right. Amen. They are. Convinced that they, don't, that they ain't worried about that. Just like Brother Danny was testifying earlier. Just like the leaves blowing all over the place. There ain't no fruit there. They're just content to be just content to be there. See, Saul thought he was doing exactly what he wanted to do. Little did he know that God had a different plan for that. See, God was working in the midst that he had sent apostles and disciples. He had sent people out. Preaching the gospel, telling people about the one and only Jesus Christ, about what he had done and where he had brought them from. And they didn't like that. You can go in there and read and say, hey, you can go out, you can tell everybody about any other God you want to talk about. You can tell them about this and that, but you don't mention the name of Jesus. Because you start throwing Jesus out there, that's when it gets real. Amen. That's when the people start taking notice of who you're talking about. Hey, they, they say that they don't. They say that they know him, but their actions are far from him. Right. Just like Paul, his actions. Hey, he led the march to kill Stephen yeah. because Stephen was ta- was standing preaching a gospel yeah. that the world needs to hear out there. But we're not sta- we're not stout enough. We're not strong enough. We're not. We're worried too much about what they say. Hey, he won. Hey, his life may have ended in death. But you know what happened there? God's plan still went on. Because the very man that they laid the stones at his feet said, Hey, this one's dead. You wanted it? Here it is. Here's his blood. Wasn't very long until that same man was on a road and God struck him down. Jesus struck him and said, Hey, what are you doing? I'm just paraphrasing. He said, what are you doing out there? I've got something better for you. Yeah. And again, that's what we have to realize. is, that, Hey, there's, there's got to be that revelation as Tommy's been mentioned. There's got to be re- something that, that reveals to us that there is a Jesus. There's got to be something that talks to us and says that we're lost. Yeah. Something that tells us that we need on a different road. Amen. And we must accept that call. See, Satan thought he had it won right there. He thought, I'll shut this gospel down. I'll shut this ministry down. They won't know why. There ain't no way that Paul's going to give his life to the Lord. Think of that. Just probably like he thought probably about eight years ago. Hey, there ain't no way Dustin Parks is coming up here in front of everybody and bowing himself and saying, Lord, you forgive me of my sins. You save me. He thought, there ain't no way that he's going to do that. But my God's greater yeah. than Satan. Yeah. His ways are greater than the ways of the world. Yeah. He's got a way of getting what he wants, no matter if I want it or not. Right. Yeah. That's right. He called me to preach, and I told him, Lord, you're making a mistake. I can't talk. I can't speak. I get all jumbled up, and I mix up my words. I can't do that. You're looking at somebody who in high school... When they said you give a speech, I'd either lay out that day, I'd skip the day, or I'd sit down and I'd take a zero. That's how much I despised being in front of anybody. And the Lord, the Lord convicted me of that. He said, hey, you're asking me of things. You want me to work on your behalf? You want me to do what I'm asking you to do? Or what you're asking me to do? He said, no, not till you do what I ask you to do. See, so he had a way of getting my attention. He had a way of saying, hey, you're going to do what I want you to do one way or another. We need more of that. Not not lifting myself up. Don't get me wrong there. Please don't misunderstand. Because I get it. I fail God miserably day in and day out. I have to ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, please forgive me for this. Forgive me for that. But we've got to be willing to do what he's asking us to do. We've got to be willing to take that journey. We've got to be willing to face the persecution that's coming our way. Because, hey, look, you can look out there and you can see that it's coming. It ain't no secret that they're trying to destroy God's people. It ain't no secret that they're trying to shut the church down. It ain't no secret that they're trying to kill the Jesus movement. It's not. That's exactly what Satan desires to do. He knows how. 
He knows how to do it. He knows what things to put in place. He knows who to tempt with and know what to tempt with and what to get you to draw away from God. See, that's why it's important for us to stay exactly in line with God. When we start drifting off just a little bit to the side, don't wait till we get way out here and left field to say, Lord, fix me, put me back where I need to be. That instant, that moment that I start separating myself from God, that sin moves in, I must then instantly repent. If I do that, then I'll be able to walk the way that he'd have me to walk. I'll be able to stay in the statutes that he'd have me to stay in. I'll be able to do the things that he'd bid me to do. But not if I don't repent. Not daily. I can't do what God's asking me to do and not pray every day. I can't stand before you and preach His blessed word if I'm not seeking His face. If I'm not picking my Bible up every day and trying to figure out what He'd have me do. Hey, it may not always be to study a message. It may just sometimes to be up, to be to be lifting him up, to be reading his word, just to hold him close to me. It may be a message that I never get to preach. It may just be a message for my soul. It may be encouragement for me. And if I'm not picking it up and I'm not reading it and I'm not doing my part, I can't stay in line with him. Again, it's easy for the world out there to stay in line with what they think they have. They think that it's okay to come to church on Sunday morning and skip for two or three months and not worry about things going on in your life. Hey, my God tells me that I need to be here. Not just by the Word of God. My Spirit tells me that I need to be here. When I miss a day or something from being sick or from being for whatever reason, I can tell. I can tell that it's easier for Satan to move in my path. I can tell that it's easier for me to listen to him. Hey, that's what he wants. If he want, if he can derail your walk, yeah. hey, hey, you've already, if you've been saved, if you've been, a, if you accepted the blood of Jesus Christ, there ain't nothing he can do about that. Right. Yeah. He can't take your name out of the book of life. He can't, he can't do nothing about that. Amen. That's right. But he can try to destroy your walk. He can try to destroy your testimony. He can do all those things. But hey, again, all things work to the good of those that love God. Even the troubles that we go through. Do you know that? Even the heartaches that we face, Brother Danny. Even the things that are going on in our world every single day. Hey, if I love God, that encourages me to tell me that, hey, what I'm going through is for His good. And I'll see the glory of it one day. Hey, it may not be something that I'm revealed at this very second. It may not be something that I understand, Brother Danny. But, I have confidence in the Word of God. And that says that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, who are called according to His purpose. Not some things, not a few things, not every now and then a couple of things will work to your good, but all things work to the good of those who love God. See, that amazed me this couple of last couple of weeks when I read that. I say, like I said, because I've misread it. I've misquoted it time and time again. But that only works to those that love God and who are called according to His purpose. So you can go back into this story and you can read about Joseph. See, he told them that he, was going to have, that he had a dream that they were going to bow before him one day. And that's what started. They didn't like that. They didn't like that he was going to be somebody high. He even had to tell his parents that they were going to have to bow down to him. And they didn't like that. The brothers didn't like that. So they did everything that they could do to stop that from happening. Again, he was sold to the Midianites. He was, he was picked up, sold to the Ishmaelites. Hey, that wasn't very long. He was prospering again. Even when the wife accused him of things, hey, they threw him out, threw him into jail. When you know the Pharaoh threw two old boys in there with him? He said, hey, God said, I'm going to give them some dreams. And Joseph, I need you to interpret. There ain't nobody else can do that but you. All right. That's right. So he interpreted their dreams. One of them lost their life. But the other one said, hey, they come to pass. And Joseph asked him, said, hey, when you get out of here, again, I'm just praying, when you get out of here, remember me. Remember what I told you. Help me. Get me out of here. Get me out of this prison that I'm living in. See, but God didn't want him out right then. 
Because that old boy forgot about him. He went and got his way and he forgot about Joseph. Yeah. He said the Bible says, if I'm not mistaken, he sat in there for two more years. Two more years. And then wouldn't you know, Pharaoh himself had a dream that nobody could interpret. And that brought back to memory of the guy. I said, hey, hey, I know somebody. I know one that did it for me. Let's go get him. Tells him exactly what's going to happen. Say, hey, there's going to be plenty for seven years. There's more than you can store up for seven years. But after that, there's going to be a famine. And you ain't, ain't nobody going to have nothing. What did the man of God do? He told her, he said, hey, let's lay it up. Let's store it up. Let's store everything up that we're going to need. That way we'll have enough to sustain everybody else. That way they can come here and they can buy from us and they'll be able to be taken care of. You see, if Joseph had gone out two years prior, that dream may not ever happen. That story may not ever happen. He may not have been able to go back. He may not have been able to be there when his brothers come forward and bow themselves before him, just like his dream told him that they would. And they begged him for food. And I like the fact that he messed with them a little bit. But in the end, he sustained his whole family. He moved them to Egypt with him. Pharaoh made him a ruler over Egypt. So there was nobody greater except Pharaoh himself than Joseph. Amen. Hey, and what did he have to come through? He went from his brothers hating him, throwing in him a pit, being sold into slavery, being accused of, of having adultery with the woman, being thrown in prison again, just to be made ruler over Egypt. See, we don't always understand the circumstances that we're going through, right. but that shows me right there that it all things yeah. work to good for those that love God. Yeah. The things that we face every single day, if we love God like we say we do, if we've been born again washed in the blood of the Lamb, all things that I go through Amen. works to the good of that. Yeah. Hey, we don't like the... Well, be honest, I don't like affliction. I don't like when things don't go my way. I don't like when I have to struggle through a little bit. But you know what? I ain't ever struggled like some of these men have. I ain't ever been through in jail for standing up and preaching the gospel. I ain't ever been through in a pit. I ain't ever been locked up, accused of this, accused of that. I ain't been through half of these things that these men went through. And there's often times that that convicts my soul. Yeah. Why? You say, why? Why does that bother you? That you're not being convicted. That you're not being persecuted. Right. It makes me wonder if I'm doing enough. Amen. If they're willing to take those chances, if they're willing to take those stances in front of Satan himself, why not? I? I ought to be willing to. So again, I'm coming to a close. But I want to read that one more time. And I want you to take that with you tonight as you go home. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. And I'll jump over in verse 37. It says, Nay, in these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If we don't... Just this little bit of scripture right here should give us comfort, should give us peace in knowing. And verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Not one thing can separate me from God. Now, I do it myself sometimes. I put things in the way to separate myself from God. I allow sin to creep in because God can't entertain sin. If I allow those things to come in that I found in my Christian life, if I allow that to come in, I'm miserable. My food don't taste good. I don't sleep good at night. I'm mad at my kids all the time. I'm mad at my wife. Just by being honest, if I'm not where I need to be with God 24-7 every day of the week, my life gets miserable. Things get out of line. But you know what's good about that? 
That lets me know that there's something going on that I need to get checked up on. Amen. And if I'll come and I'll seek His face and I'll ask Him to expose to me what I've done, hey, you may not have done nothing that you recollect, but there's something going on. If you'll earnestly ask Him, God, what happened? We were walking hand in hand. Why are you drifting away from me? Why have I drifted away from you? He'll show you. And the moment that he shows you, you got a choice to make. Are you going to fix it? Are you going to be reunited with God and walk hand in hand with him? Or are you going to continue in your old path? Or continue in the path that you're walking down and being in that miserable state, being grumpy, being where your food don't taste good, being unhappy in everything that you do. So tonight, and again, as I'm coming to a close, I want to say this as, as I, I'm sorry, I'm trying my best to come to a close. Joseph saved his people through the persecution that he faced. You know, there's another man that saved the whole world. They were both sold for silver, Joseph for 20 pieces. Judas thought Jesus was worth 30 pieces of silver. That man, Jesus, Suffered everything. Suffered persecution like no way like that. We'll never face, Brother Danny. We'll never understand what Jesus faced on the cross. Carrying the cross to the We'll never understand what he faced in his daily ministry. Walking every day. We'll never understand the half that what happened to him. But he loved God. Yeah. And you know, all that that happened to him. End up working for good for me. Yeah, him dying on the cross, bearing my sins, yeah. bleeding out, dying, yeah, rising again. That was for me. Yeah, if that ain't good, there ain't nothing good in the world. Because that's the best good that I that I know about. There ain't nothing better than Jesus Christ. Right. So, again, I, I promise I'm coming to a close. If you want to come and get a song, baby. Nothing that you go through can separate you from the love of God. Amen. It may seem that way sometimes. Hey, I've been there. Yeah. It may seem like you don't know where your next meal, where your next breath, where the next thing that you're going to do is going to come from. Right. But what I've found in my walk just in this short time Usually when I get in that shape, when I get in that state that I don't know what to do, when I don't know how to handle it, and I turn it over to Him, that's usually when things happen. That's usually when things take place and things start getting better for me. If you've got a need tonight, don't leave here with the the same burdens that you may have when you come in here. Come to the altar. We'll pray with you tonight.